people ask me this a lot when I'm with Boston. So I get a lot of uh, questions about using a 200 milligram or 300 milligram cycle. And mm -hmm. I have my own view, which is not in contrary to your views at all, as we've mm -hmm. discovered in our discussions. But I think we should expand on it. So the idea is this. Now, Steve, tell us why about this 300 sub 300 milligram cycle. So this people ask me this a lot when I'm with Boston. So I get a lot of uh, questions about using a 200 milligram or 300 milligram cycle. And mm -hmm. I have my own view, which is not in contrary to your views at all, as we've mm -hmm. discovered in our discussions. But I think we should expand on it. So the idea is this. Some people are saying that back in the day, in like early 2000s, they used to say online, your first cycle should be 500 milligrams of test. It was just always that. And then after, I guess recently, due to some influence of some people on YouTube, potentially, people have, which is probably good, lowered the initial dose because they potentially can get something out of that. My argument personally has always been like, if I was totally natural and I was going to decide to start gear, I would want to start with HCG first. So I don't have yeah, that disconnect with the testicles. And if I did start with HCG, I could raise my HCG level to a little bit higher than my normal testosterone level if I wanted, or I could use it at the same testosterone level that I had before I started. And then I could start with like 50 milligrams of testosterone and theta week and like slowly move up. That's my idea. Right, so, it's a, it's a, so it's a progression, right? A lot of people selectively hear like, oh, why would you take shut down your HPTA for 100 milligrams of test? We have to start somewhere. So let's say you're completely drug free, right? And your, your testosterone production is kind of non-responsive, right? Your uh, pituitary is lazy or your testicles are lazy. Your just serum testosterone is like 300, 400, 500, 600, whatever. Okay, maybe maybe try the ACG protocol first by incrementing the ACG over the correlation of four or five weeks to see where you feel good. Then you go do your blood work, see where testosterone levels are at, right? It's a freebie protocol to see if you get anxiety from ACG or you get um, right other side effects related to bumping up your androgen levels twofold. Because if you're if you're clinically androgen deprived for your entire life and your testosterone is 300, then going from 300 to 2000, that's like somebody's punching you in the face. And and it's gonna let's let's make this clear to the audience. That's gonna mm. cause the most down regulation in your sex drive. That sudden bump. You don't want yeah. that sudden bump because that right. down regulates everything. So so why don't we are a little bit patient because your hormone journey is going to be decades, hopefully. Um, if you do it modestly, if you, you know, go ham, then it might last five years and then you're done. Um, so why don't we start low? 250, I use HCG three times a week and then 500 the next week, right? Three times a week and then a thousand three times a week and then maybe a thousand I use every day. And if you really want to push it, 2000 I use every day. And that's, or 1500 is 1500 I use ACG per day is I think typical fertility protocol dose. And then at one point during this protocol, you start to feel good. Okay, you go do your blood work, see where your hormone levels ended up at. Maybe you went from 300 to 600 or 300 to 1,000 or maybe 1,500 even. Some guys get 1,500 testosterone and ACG protocol like oh, this. Oh, very easy. Yeah, many people. Right, but it goes slowly. It goes slowly. You're not going from 300 to 1,500 and then get side effects. And and listen, not everybody is, is as resilient as hardcore bodybuilders who can go from a normal testosterone level to 500 test exogenously and survive right most people don't have good response to that protocol because i've i've read through those cycle logs on all the steroid boards and a lot of people they have to abort their first cycle when they go like this plus they don't do blood work right they're a little bit impatient i'm going to do a deep ball kickstart and then within four weeks they got shin splints and and lower back pumps and moon face and acne and gyno formation and then the whole cycle turns to shit so I, just I, I, start, I oh, let me finish yeah, yeah. let me finish what i say yeah. i'm almost done yeah. so you start somewhere with this hcg protocol you see where your testosterone is at when at the moment you feel good and then if you want you can replace that with a little bit of testosterone so let's say you ended up at a thousand nanograms per deciliter maybe 100 100 to 150 milligrams exogenous testosterone is enough right you have to lower the hcg dose because i don't think a thousand ios per day is sustainable and then you lower the ACG dose to a maintenance dose, let's say 250 to 500 IUs three times per week, depending on if it's pharmaceutical or UGL or whatever. And then you start ramping on the testosterone dose. But listen, you can get great results on 150 milligrams of test with ACG for eight weeks. Lowest effective dosages earn 250, and then you earn 500. So my over the, over the creation of six months, 
instead of starting with 500, you built muscularity into the dose where you earned 500 and barely got any side effects. You didn't have to micromanage with tamoxifen or aromatase inhibitor or, or whatever else that people experience. Plus, if you get hair loss, at least you'll be able to mitigate that earlier on without, um, right? And you'll shut yourself down. But a three-week, ci- a three-month cycle, that's kind of outdated. Yeah, most people yeah. go on cycle and do a lowest effective dose until they get that's results and they stagnate. Yes. You know, so yeah. you, listen, I, I started my cycle. Okay, I'm relying solely on muscle memory with 156 milligrams of test and 125 milligrams of Primo. People call that TRT plus, right? TRT plus plus. I ended up at 100 kilos from 92 to 100 kilos. So, right, I'm relying on muscle memory, but I was able to restore most of the muscle mass that I had in the past with a dose that, that bodybuilders would laugh at. Why would yeah. you shut down your HPTA? You know, yeah, your, your testosterone is 600 nanograms per deciliter. Why would you shut that down? Well, now I'm going to 600 milligrams and now you're going to see some serious shit. Like for me, my sort of arguments to above and beyond that, like obviously I'm totally on the same page with if you, whatever your goals are should dictate a, what drug you're using, what dosage burden you need to achieve that goal. What do you have a time frame? Like there's so many different mm. factors that play into that. But also when people are like, why would you shut yourself down to use such a low dose? It's like, if you're cycling on and off of shit to begin with, like this is like, that's the most subpar way to go about. Like this is like, ah, oh, yes, yeah. like, well, why the fuck? The same thing. like, why are you yeah. even using this shit? If you're going to cycle off anyways, realistically, oh, thank God. like you're going to shut down your HPTA cycle off and use like toxic fucking drugs to recover your system and crash yourself. Yeah. Like that's, that's way yes. worse in my opinion than just being like mm-hmm. a benign, like as benign of a dose as possible. It gives you performance enhancing effects. And then you like titrate up as needed with the minimum effective dose with the least mm. deleterious in, impact to your fucking system. But again, like cycling off of shit is going to be way worse for you and trying to like dr- like aggressively recover to baseline to transiently have nice looking blood work for one day with your gonadotropins yes. and everything <laughs> and then go back on all the shit. Like what the fuck are you doing? Just stay on like a li- well-tolerated dose and like titrate up as you need. So it's not about, oh, they're only using like 250 or 300. Like that's stupid. It's no, like I can make gains at 300 and when I need 500, I'll go to fucking 500. But for now exactly. I'm at 300 and I'm not going to crash my system by coming off. So it's not like I'm limited by, oh my God, I only have 12 weeks. So I need to be on 500 to fucking 750 or whatever, make as much gains in 12 weeks and then crash my system, fuck myself up right when I recover from all the clearing the hormones out, crashing my system, recovering it mm. with drugs, get back up to baseline. I'm back to baseline fuck my system up again go back on 750 like how about the whole time instead of going zero 750 zero fucking whatever how about we just do like 300 keep your system like as healthy as possible while making like good like maintainable gains and like creep up if you need to you know like you're you're gonna be on fucking trt anyways if you're using this shit ultimately so like you know Plus, you can't gain that much muscle at the same time anyway. So instead of mega dosing with 750 or 2000, what many bodybuilders are doing, yeah. why don't you put some of that money aside for fucking blood work? Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or and, to- and monitor your health, you know, see what's going on internally. And then you, you try to get the same results for a lower dose and while having money for the blood work. Yeah. And obviously, uh, blood work is $1,000. Your yeah. cycle is $5,000. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? And you obviously know? there's context specific situations too. Like if you're a athlete who has like acute exposure periods and you need to get shit in and out of your system or like whatever, like that's different. We're talking about just like sustainable approach for like non-tested mm-hmm. people who are just trying to like get, you know, as maximal ergogenic properties out of it with the minimal impact of their system. And ultimately this is like, no one's doing like one cycle and like coming off and like somehow maintaining like bodybuilder size or something like that. And even if you're not trying to maintain bodybuilder size, like I'm just talking about drugs in general, like this is something that should be a long, like sustainable, least impact to your system approach and cycling on and off and crashing yourself and then going back on right when you've recovered and then fucking yourself up again. Like that's not the approach. I think the longer, slow, you know, slow process of like incrementally titrating as needed not only minim- minimizes like side effect burden and allows you to be like far more intelligent with when you deploy certain compounds, where and when, but above and beyond that, it's less stress to your organ systems and you're not crashing yourself unnecessarily. So the whole, why would you shut yourself down? It's like, well, you're fucking shut down regardless. You know, like you're going to be shut down yeah. 
you know, like you can keep yourself not shut down with the HCG, you know, if you really want to. So yeah. I think the whole so that, argument is just like semantics at the end of the day. Plus, yeah, if, that you, part if you want to come off, yeah, if, if you want to come off, it will take six months before your fertility is back anyway. So if you really want to go yeah, off, like who's off, cycling properly, yeah, well, let's properly. Talk about that. like even Olympians yeah. Nobody that cycle does. off, even Olympians are like, oh, my coach had me come off all the drugs for fucking six to eight weeks. Like James Holling said, you coming off for six weeks. Your fucking drugs are out of your off. system. Okay, okay, that's an. Oh, Derek, Derek, we got to talk about this. Okay, listen. <laughs> so, so that that's that's not even a. Okay, so w- Derek, I have personal experience <laughs> with that James Hollinghead type comment recently, which you know about. Yeah. And the yeah. gentleman that I'm talking about, same problem. He's like, okay, I just finished Olympia. I need to take some time uh, to restart my HPG system so that I can compete. I'm not going to too much later, so I can compete, compete later. And I'm like why are we doing that exactly so i we talked about on the phone and i realized that in his mind starting this is what they're telling them they're the bodybuilding coaches they're telling them take hcg get your balls working take clomid and novadex and proviron do this for a few weeks like eight weeks and then go back on cycle i'm like what's the point of that exactly (laughs) so i tried i tried to explain to i was like and he he understood immediately he's like thank you i just i never knew this before i was like look hpg is is shutting you off because it's making your gonads work so it's sort of a synthetic way to keep your gonads alive, your testicles alive. So what would be a good idea? I told him maybe use HCG like eight months of the year, except pre-contest because it aromatizes mm-hmm. a lot, and you just keep it at a low level, like what what uh, Steve recommends, like five hundred to two fifty. I just said keep your balls alive. Now I told him if you want to go off, you'd have to remove that HCG and control estrogen and hope that your luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating will start working again. But why are you doing that? I don't, there's no point. If they work for two weeks, which is not going to that quickly, but if they did, it's not going to make any difference for your health. Yeah. They conflate this idea of restarting the system with the health issues, which brings up this other issue, which is, I'm so glad both of you think exactly the same way as me, which is what is cycling? The cycling what was with, what was throwing me off on all those questions. They're like, hey, I want to start a cycle for 10 weeks of 300 milligrams. If you're doing a cycle, that's different. Yeah. But if you're thinking of it realistic, because another problem, right? You guys both know about this. Let's tell our audience. There are uh, academic medical doctors who've written in papers that they believe that cycling is one of the major reasons for heart problems among bodybuilders because they gain so much water and lose it so so mm. quickly, so suddenly. So, and the reason why bodybuilders do it, I think that they think, hey, eight months of, or not even eight months, 10 months of the year I'm on and my health is just crap. So yeah. two months, I'm going to go off try to get my HDL and my LDL like okay and my liver like okay so that I don't know I even understand the rationality so that they're okay no. that time period and then I fuck them for the rest of the year yeah but I yeah. so instead like what I was thinking and now you guys think the same way is how about this how about you do a cycle where you know exactly how your health is on cycle not off cycles they never yeah. check on cycle. they never check so not off cycle on cycle know your health so you know exactly what's going on try to take protective measures and yeah. try to use the least amount that you need and monitor it as you go right yeah so like if ultimately like transiently having an acceptable but not totally atrocious blood panel one time per year for two weeks is like nothing nothing, dude like you should you should be taking approaches to maintain as high of a level of health as you can for the entirety of exposure not for two weeks androgen depriving yourself trying to get back to like (laughs) Your, your shbg skyrockets and you get a better looking you know some transient markers that look a bit better on paper that aren't in the fucking gutter at this point for like one week and then you're like fuck it now we go back on everything like well, no well, let's, just, let's just i mean let's make it so simple like think about inflammation say your c-reactive protein is you don't know what it is all year when you're cycling so it's like who knows and then when you're I, do, I do i do i do i do i do mean, i check yeah, every month yeah. yeah but i mean these guys you know <laughs> pro bodybuilders or whatever it might be really high right and then on their off they might not even know it's high because then they they only test when they're off it so they don't even know they have an inflammatory condition or for example yeah. ldl cholesterol your ldl cholesterol is 150 all year or two 200 all year and then suddenly it drops down to 100 so you don't even know that you were developing plaque at a rapid rate right. all year you know what i mean so yeah, this they is can't fit they system. can't fit in the mri so they can't even check it this, I'm mm. glad we had. I could barely, I could barely f- f- fit in the MRI when I was completely off cycle and tried to do my heart imaging. Now, luckily, I walked away right from the ten years of taking PEDs without any negative thing besides a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which was completely resolved. But listen, not everybody's like that, right? And oh. I did all my blood work screening religiously. I still do them, and I still do it way more often than probably anybody else. Plus, I put them out publicly for everybody to see, including all of my organ imaging. It's not perfect, but we're monitoring it. And yeah, I'm doing monitoring my best is to, the key. Right. Yeah. I'm 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 doing my best with the lowest effective dosages. And and listen, you know, nowadays we have us three and many other 
educators who actively try to promote this lifestyle from this angle. So there's no excuse anymore. And there's no excuse. It, At least I had an excuse that we went to the bodybuilding yeah, forums and they yeah. say time on is time off. No, we didn't yeah. know crap. Oh. I mean, Steve, do you remember what we had to deal with compared to what people have access to now? I mean, we knew yeah. nothing. I mean, no. I was doing all kinds of things because just off like the HC, not using HCG, which <laughs> you know yeah. I have this. I was doing a lot of things because people said it, and we and and yeah. Anyway, uh, one thing, uh, Steve, I want to mention. You were talking about sustainable dose for HCG. I do agree that like 250, 500, it seems mm. does maintain some people's testicular function well. Yeah. But I think of a sustainable dose as this. If you're totally natural, go get your blood tested and find mm. out what your test level is and your luteinizing hormone level and just get that as a baseline. So say your test level is 500, you can then slowly titrate up HCG every other day, like 250, then 500, and, and slowly check your blood tests until you know what dose of HCG replaced that luteinizing hormone dose for you and follow close ah, to the yeah. So right. then you know that's my replacement. It's not going to probably cause me desensitization or whatever because it's causing the same uh, you know, natural levels. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what you can move up to is what I imagine. Yeah. You, know? you right. can move up no, to I, that I, on cycle I, I if you want. Agree. Yeah, I, I usually tell my guys to just keep titrating up until you feel good, which means you're a little bit higher. And then at least that will be your effective dose for the day comes when you want to do PCT to get somebody pregnant, not to do PCT because somebody on the message yeah. board said, oh, it's a 13 weeks and now your cycle yeah. has to stop. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so Steve, what what in the world happened to your body? Because I don't have pictures, but I'd like to see what happened to you. You want to see the pictures? Yeah, because right. I've been seeing sure. the recent videos. You really do look huge. You gain oh, so a, much muscle uh, so fast. Can you can you enable screen sharing on my side? Oh, 